Howdy, Ben. Hello. 20 minutes of tears. Yeah, short-term yeah. pain, long-term gain. What's new with the crew? You know, Chuck Chuck. <laughs> chuck Chuck. Chuck Chuck. She's gentle with him, and she wants to lick all the milk off his body and or <laughs> face. Yum. <laughs> but How now, is the Carpathian, Dave? He's being pretty polite. He hasn't bit me in a few weeks. I'm almost totally healed. Oh, good boy. Does he still go in his cage at night? When he feels like it. Sometimes he can hear his very loud breathing? nostril breathing under the door <laughs> <laughs> in the middle uh, of the night. <laughs> yeah. Is Greta in a cage? Yeah. yeah. She cannot be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So Davidson's back. I, yeah, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> he never left. Oh, you know, I thought you were just quiet through <laughs> I, all I, that. I, okay. <laughs> Hi, Pete. Hi. Right. Um, um, all right, here yeah. we go. <clears throat> a single inhabitant, a rambling, red-eyed drunk, sprawled upon a desk in the alderman's office. The man's singing ceases. He lifts his head from the desk and slumps back in his finely crafted leather chair, sniffing loudly and dragging his hands over his face. He pats his clothes and absently brushes bottles and papers from the desk, which clatter among many others on the floor. The red-rimmed eyes take their time focusing on yours, Glib, your head just above the desk. Glib is going to lift himself up onto the desk and uh, sit cross-legged in front of him. Hines. Convey us to Hines. I am not a spirit. Bergania, small spirit thing. He's not buying it. Okay, Razimuth wants to slap him. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! Go ahead and make not a good old-fashioned attack roll, Robin. Well, <laughs> I guess it's, well, it's not a death slap. <laughs> he breathes inward at the gentle breeze. Your attempt at asking him forcefully was unsuccessful? I don't think he noticed. <laughs> <sighs> this man's attention is to walk up towards McConnell grab his shoulder, turn to him, throw the water in his face, and then slap him. <laughs> Make an attack roll. He is almost a bag of bones as you pick him up out of the chair, and like a weak <laughs> child, violently hurl him against the wall, stuffing the filthy glass of dirty water down his mouth, which he sputters and coughs up. He falls to the floor, choking and coughing. His red, baggy eyes look up at you like a pleading Greta, but he says nothing. What is going on in this town? And where is Heinz? And how do we get there? <laughs> yeah, roll your d20 and add your charisma modifier. <laughs> Take advantage on that, actually. No more. I'll deal with you. I'll deal. Just, you'll have to do something for Saltzheim. I'll arrange your royal meeting, I promise. But you must take care of some ghoulies. Easter time, they've been. You'll do it, I Ghoulies, he's pleading, he's wringing his hands. Ghoulies, the ghoulies. He's now barely sense it, and he's slipping into a dark hole. Ghoulies? I like girlies. Girlies are great. <laughs> <laughs> I know not what it means. I feel like, oh, this long night is starting to work on my wits. Mm. Ah, but should we journey to the east to see what this man is speaking of, or... Or perhaps we could find rest in his seemingly abandoned domicile. Or... Well, I think we should tie this fellow up. A sensible course of action. Yes. Then some satisfactory knots. They would pass inspection. Rasmus, you take first watch. And with that, Glib will exit the room and head upstairs. Clomping up the stairs, you emerge into the sitting room. Largely bare, but for a couple of Chesterfields, cobwebby and unused. And this room has large shuttered doors that roll open to the deck and balcony. Entering the bedroom, you find a small jewelry box which stands out. Inside is what could be described as a mechanism. Now, also on a writing desk in this room is a very ornate looking letter opener. More than a letter opener, what could be a fighting dagger if one wished. It stinks of magic and of valuable metal. Well, Glib, having tossed the room to your satisfaction, do you just conk out on the ritzy bed? Glib will climb up onto the bed, right into the middle, and kind of spread himself out. Get comfy. 
Uh, Isfahan, what were you doing? You followed Glib upstairs. Is it safe to say you two are calling it a night? Razumith, we shift to you alone with the aldermen. If there are any windows in the domicile, I'd like to look out each of them and just try and maintain the security of where we are. Keeping watch? Exactly. Okay, cool, guys. Is that the overnight music? Maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe one day I'll get a sound effect. Who's your favorite child? Uh, Vigo. Okay. I just drink constantly. The evening passes. And at about six in the morning, Razumith, as you peer out the window at the front of the building, you begin to see stirrings in the town, signs of life. Several people start to pool out of the longhouse. And they all begin to walk northwards towards the north end of the town, where the land ends. Now, with the tide having gone out, they're starting to step down into the marshy area, and many of them are walking well, it is only fair that our night watchman gain some rest. I could watch over Razumith whilst our subtle uh, companion perhaps finds out what is about with these people traversing this gap uh, now that the tide has receded. Perhaps I should go to the longhouse and uh, discern what they were doing last night. An investigation does seem in order. Glib, you step off of the porch of the alderman's house and make your way back towards the town. You can still see townspeople yeah. starting to march across the marsh towards Saltshelm. In the distance, as right. the sun comes up, you can see a large gothic keep as it rises up from the sea. I'm going to slip, slip into the larder once again. You're in the longhouse. I'm going to cautiously approach the brazier and uh, have a look in the uh, cauldron. A shimmering, luminous, quicksilver liquid. The sour reek emanates from this liquid. I will ladle some of this stuff into a pitcher. With that, I'm going to make my way back to my companions in the house. What ho is Fahan? This liquid, I can't make hides of hair of. It is, it is an unholy concoction. They weren't imbibing this, were they? The alderman in a drawling half-conscious voice. Ghoulies. 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 Ghoulies! <laughs> that man is tormented. Glib's gonna poke his head out the door, see if the coast is clear, and uh, move over to this building. You stealthily sprint towards it. You're able to hear the hushed sound of more than one voice in a conversation. If I listen carefully, can I discern what they're saying? You're able to hear talk of strangers, recent arrivals, but uh, something okay. specific does pass your ears, and it is to the effect of, well, uh, when do we go for him? It will be soon, uh, when the sun is high. They should be occupied. I'm going to uh, move back to the alderman's house. I'll report what I'd seen and heard. What's the game plan, gentlemen? The sun is risen, although it is an overcast and ugly day. Two options. We could follow the villagers to the helm, or we could address the concerns of the alderman and explore the eastern woods. Well, I think we should interrogate the alderman now. Agreed. So good suggestion, perhaps he is awake now. And Glib, you did mention the individual speaking of a labor camp, and much of the documentation I was reading lent itself to such a place being to the east, where also our unconscious host had mentioned there were ghoulies. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, he did say if we dispose of the ghoulies, he would help us with uh, seeing Heinz. From what I hear of ghoulies, they'll get you in the end. <laughs> I like that. that. We get to look forward to an interrogation. Huh? All we do is smack <laughs> people around and, uh, and, and, and ask questions. It's, like it's a true. It's true. The, the, the plot. What can I say? But hey, that's that's how the crookie the crookie cumbles, as they say. McConnell and the die had best be more cooperative.
Jen and I yeah. watched Prisoners of Ghost Land, the latest Nick Cage nightmare romp. <laughs> it, it was not nearly as shocking, grotesque, or retarded as I was hoping, and it was quite boring. Yeah, because I think that's. <laughs> The voice of the Alzheimer's really sticks with me. Though I only have one voice for Germans. It's the most stereotypical voice you can make. <laughs> oh, here comes more convoy. Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. They just honk it up. Oh, for... Does Vigo like the honking? Vigo does like the honking. <laughs> <clears throat> Wonderful. All the brothers united again. Uh-huh. Memories of coming in late at night and taking like 25 minutes trying to get from the front door as stealthily as possible to my bedroom <laughs> right across from our parents bedroom did you make it without big naked dad confronting you and <laughs> telling you you reek like a gin house <laughs> i often made it but not always okay gentlemen let's All right. see the three of you gain the alderman's office. He is where you left him, slumped in his leather upholstered chair, still bound. Good morrow, Alderman McConnell. He stares at you silently. The reciprocal greeting where I am from is... Are you mad? What are you doing? I gave the warning to get out. The hairs are pricking up on the back of your neck, Isfahan. Gentlemen, pardon me a moment, and he's going to exit the manor. As soon as you open the front door, you see a large conglomeration of men. Some have made the march back across the marsh. Some have started filtering out of the shacks and buildings, and they are now pooling in northern Salzheim and moving towards your location, the alderman's house. He's, he's going to quickly close the door. The mayor is saying, You know not what you saw, but you'll know it soon, or you brought it on yourselves. And he's fighting madly. How do you proceed? Isfahan's going to turn to McConnell and point towards the door. Those men who are coming, will you speak to them? He starts to <laughs> gurgle with mad laughter. and It becomes a, a cackle. He's completely gone, communicable no longer. Companions, I believe this may be a situation we are quickly losing a control of, and perhaps we should mm, vacate this premise. Master Glib, what say you? Okay. I recommend we exit out the back window, uh, companions. Talk is cheap, gentlemen. What is the action? I'm climbing through it. Mm. Razumith, how, you gain the... How far to the ground? It's the first floor. I know that could be... <laughs> Intimidating for Glib, bud. <laughs> Come on, put on your hero pants, Glib. <laughs> you gain the outside wall of the alderman's house. You're on the opposite side of the building from the front door. You hear the sound of the crowd increase. Definitely a raucous, hallooing, rowdy bunch. The door of the alderman's house slams open, and you hear their shouting, fill the building. The alderman's mad cackling continues. It's time, McConnell! Crazy laughter and jeering. More crashing sounds as they demolish the building in their wake. There are two dozen men now crowded into the building. Ooh! Isfahan, you lean around the corner. You see crowd members in the town square surrounding the black post in the middle of the trampled ground. Many of them are holding lit torches. As you continue to reconnoiter the view, you see and hear the main body of the crowd within the house burst out the front door again. And as they move down the hilly path towards the center of town, with them they have McConnell trussed up amongst them. They prod him towards the middle of the square. They continue to laugh and jeer, and McConnell seems totally given in to the situation. Companions, I believe there is about to be a conflagration of our late host ideas. Glib's going to pipe up. I'm all for booking it. Razumov agrees. Isvan's going to vigorously shake his head in agreement. And it seems the conflagration may about to begin. There is a joyous atmosphere, a festive feeling about the crowd. It is time. Glib will, uh, Glib will uh, make his move across the uh, along the cliff edge here. All right. Are you guys joining him? Are you moving as a body? 
The group of you dash from the corner of the house towards the cliff edge. You make it about 50 feet. And then this guard here, seeing you, takes one hand from his suspenders and points and shouts... As as he's shouting, does Isfahan see this? Can he try and take a preemptive action before the man can shout? Make a dexterity throw, Isfahan. Uh, By all means, yes, you see the whoa. inevitable eyeline coming, Isfahan. You may take an action. He's going to quickly take up his onk, press it between his hands, and mumble to himself, Silentio West, and cast silence on this guard's body, creating a 15-foot radius of complete silence on top of him. <laughs> uh, kick ass. It buys you guys some time. The pyre is beginning to smolder beneath McConnell. The party reaches the cliff edge. Try to find an anchor point for the rope. As he reaches his companion, they'll both be rendered silent. He's going to look to Glib and say, This will hold all our weight simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going first. And with that, Glib will go down the rope as quickly as possible. Glib. You drop into the water as Isfahan observes over his shoulder past his feet. He does not see you rise to the surface. Razumuth begins descending? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, splashing down the salty water immediately soaks into your clothing. You now stand at the bottom of the cliff. I'm glad we leaned into that rope idea. My fucking rope. I want my fucking rope. My my grapple's up there. How the yeah, fuck do that's... I get my grapple? What are we are looking those, at here, D? Are those evil swamp lizards? Yes. Fuck. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> however, however, they should they should not be visible to you <laughs> at this time. Okay, ignore the lizards behind the marsh. Get, get, get me out of the water. Get me out of the water. Get me up on your shoulders. I don't like being wet. Let's get as close to the shore as we can. Oh, right, my you... rope! Rope! I, pull, I don't think we're getting rope your down. rope back. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. On with that. All right. So you're hugging the cliff edge. And now a wailing scream as flame meets flesh. And your imagination lets play. The scream continues and continues. Well, considering how much alcohol he drank last night, he should burn up pretty quickly. (laughs) That was a bit dark, wasn't it? Okay. Oh, God. (laughs) Glib as glib as usual. Is it towards the keep, then? Towards the keep, yeah. Let's do it. I'm leaning into it. <laughs> Going towards the keep. All right, so you begin your march. You hear whistling and shouting and calls of strangers from the shore. And turning, you can see the townsfolk, at least a few of them who aren't watching the billowing mass of smoke, the screaming now silenced cavorting and jeering at you some are turning and dropping their trousers and slapping their butt cheeks and uh many are just pointing and laughing i suppose uh, you carry on your merry way carrying on begrudgingly and slightly embarrassedly far off at the keep at the top of its battlements you see a puff of smoke and following the puff of smoke Uh-oh. a black dot against the horizon arcing across the sky and it lands 50 feet ahead of you in an explosion a geyser of wet earth once your ears have stopped ringing and the dirt has stopped falling you hear the townspeople again laughing and hooting slapping their bellies and catcalling ye god ye gods god damn it they're firing a cannon at us this must be dark magic (laughs) yeah yeah dark magic it's called a cannon the ground laid before you it is wide flat and open with no cover of any sort, a swampy, mucky marsh leading towards the rising tidal island. Um, I'm suggesting a sprint. Uh, Razumith, are you following? You're sprinting? Yep. yep. All right, so we'll Ready? move you as a body. However, it is now the cannon, the mortar, to be precise, is huh. turn. The explosion goes off just behind you guys, and you're able to dive ahead of it. But you each incur five hit points worth of damage from careening metal and bits of rock. Jesus, fuck. How far to the keep? You said 800 meters, didn't you? That's right. It is almost a kilometer. Holy fuck. So we have to run really fucking far to get to the keep. If you insist on that course of action. (laughs) Isfahan's going to shout at uh, Glib and Razumuth. Companions, I get the sense we will 
die if we keep in this pursuit of action. I suggest we flee in the other direction. So, Glib, it's your turn. You see your comrade as you pick yourself up out of the mud, waving his arms and shouting as he runs towards you. The ringing in your ears settles and you can hear his voice. Other direction! Glib's going to continue towards the uh, the wall. Full bore. And, Razimuth, it's your turn. You pull your face up out of the muck, bleeding profusely and fairly wounded. Glib goes pelting by you. To these splashy little steps, zipping off ahead. I think I'll uh, take Isfahan's sage advice, proceed the opposite direction. Another puff of smoke erupts from the wall. The ball careens towards the party. Lands just adjacent to you, Isfahan. Please to make a dexterity saving throw. All right, yes, you, you see its trajectory and dive best you can looking to bury yourself within the mud. However, you still feel the eruption of the explosion and the debris pelts you for eight damage, shredding oh, your armor and awesome. rending your flesh. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to cast uh, Cure Wounds on himself. Very nice. Very nice. And is going to run his movement towards Razimuth. Glib, it is your turn. Glib is going to hit the dirt and freeze. You hold your breath as you hear a great crash is not far. The mortar ball explodes, showering you with dirt once again. After a time, they cease. Razimuth and Isfahan, you gain the cliff edge 30 feet below the top. Some of the townsfolk have lined the cliff edge and are calling down, spitting at you and hallooing. So... Perhaps on that note, we'll call it a night. Guys, I can't wait to see where the adventure takes you. Thanks to all of you, and I'll look forward to next Thursday's adventure. Have a good week, guys. Thanks, boys. Right. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Cheers. Cheers.